Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to this very special holy season, Ash Wednesday, leading us into Lent. We pray that you will indeed teach us how to wait on you and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Ash Wednesday, um, our topic for today is Hear my prayer, O Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And we have for our meditation Psalm 102. Uh, the entire Psalm has 28 verses, and we'll just read some of the verses uh, from that Psalm, Psalm 102. It says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke, and my bones burn like a furnace. My heart is struck down like grass and has withered. I forget to eat my bread. Because of my loud groaning, my bones cling to my flesh. I am like a desert owl of the wilderness, like an owl of the waste places. I lie awake, I am like a lonely sparrow in the housetop. All the day my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name for a curse, for I eat ashes like bread and mingle tears with my drink. Because of your indignation and anger, for you have taken me up and thrown me down. My days are like an evening shadow. I wither away like grass. That's just uh, verse 11, but you can continue uh, uh, to the end. And we will read from the commentary in Daily Fountain. The topic again is Hear My Prayer, O Lord. The introduction to this psalm shows it as a prayer of an afflicted person who is faint and pouring out his cries to the Lord. Various conditions of life are reflected in the prayer. Verses 3 to 8 paint the picture of someone in very deep distress. He hardly eats and has been reduced to skin and bones. Verse 4. He is taunted by enemies, verse 8, and feels very lonely, verse 7. He feels forsaken by God as if God was very angry with him, verse 10. He also feels threatened by death, verses 11 and 23. The prayer expresses confidence in God's greatness and strength and his love for his children, verses 12 to 16. The writer has firm belief that his prayer will be answered, verse 17, and prays that his answer comes speedily. He trusts God that this is the time to receive his favor, verse 13. Whatever is your present condition or challenge, present it to God in prayer. Whatever the threats around you, direct them to God in prayer. Lay all your burdens upon him because he cares for you. That is what 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says. Remember to pray in faith so as to receive the desired answers. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Ash Wednesday, as we already noted, is a very special time in the Christian year and it's a time when we 
evaluate our lives and allow God to search us. We do this over a 40-day period, following in the steps of Jesus, who before his public ministry, shortly after his baptism, went into the wilderness for a time of fasting, during which he was tempted. And we see that during that temptation, he was tempted in so many ways. Indeed, in every possible way we could be tempted. And yet he did not sin. As we go through this time, we come into it sometimes feeling overwhelmed by the problems and the challenges all around us. Some of the challenges are personal challenges. You are not who you want to be and the failures are more than the successes and you say to yourself, when am I going to get to the point I want to get to? All the resolutions you've made at the beginning of the year or at special retreats, you find that you are so far off the mark. And there are other times when because of disobedience, you just feel God himself is angry with you. Now, Lent is a time to bring all of these things before God. When we are faint, we come to God for refreshing. When we feel overwhelmed, we come back to God. Let's see how the psalmist puts it. He says, hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Now, prayer is our way of deliberately bringing our situation to God's attention. Not to educate him, no, no, but to say, God, this is beyond me and I just want to bring it to you. And if there's anything we must note about Lent, it is that it is a time set apart to seek God's face in prayer, in Bible reading. You know, a lot of people just look at it in terms of fasting. Yes, fasting is a major part of our observance of Lent. And fasting takes different forms. It could be abstinence from food uh, over a period. Some, for various reasons, abstain from food for longer or shorter periods. But that is not the essential thing. It's not the abstinence. Some even uh, fast through um, abstinence from um, uh, sleep because vigil is a form of fasting whereby people refuse to sleep so that they can devote their time to prayer. It is also uh, a, a form of fasting. And there are other forms of fasting that people engage in. You may say, okay, I'm going to be less with people and spend more time. But in all forms of fasting, an essential part, an exercise that makes it meaningful is to be able to listen to God by reading his word. If you used to read just one chapter, you probably will need to read much more than that. Nothing stops you from reading two, three, four, or five chapters. Indeed, those who have access to devices that have audio uh, Bibles can read so many. But it's a time to saturate our minds with the Word of God because each time Jesus was tempted, he said, it is written, and the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. It is also a time of prayer to say, look, I want to spend more time in the presence of God and to tell him about all of my troubles. And that is what we learn from the psalmist here. The very first sentence says, Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. As you go through the entire psalm, you will notice that the psalmist deliberately goes to God with his situation. One thing we must say is that for anybody who chooses to pray, it is a commendable thing because there are all kinds of seeming alternatives 
but you choose to pray. You know, there are people who say, oh, I can go to that person to give me the solution. And people have worked out all sorts of alternatives to God. But prayer, the very act of prayer, is a demonstration of the fact that you are saying, God, you are the one more than anyone else whose intervention I need. It's an acknowledgement of the fact that God is able, God is trustworthy. So he says, do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. And then he describes his situation. He says, for my days pass away like smoke. My bones burn like a furnace. My heart is struck down like grass and has withered. I forget to eat my bread. And he says again in verse 6, I am like a desert all of the wilderness. Verse 7, I lie awake and I am like a lonely sparrow. Verse 8, all the day my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name for a cause. So you just find that at every point there are, there are difficulties, there are problems, there are troubles. But verse 12 is a turning point, isn't it? It's a faith booster because verse 12 says, But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered through all, throughout all generations. In all the problems we face, we must understand that God stands above our problems. It has been said that if your problem is big and frightening and overwhelming, it is because your vision of God is small. But if your vision of God is big, your problem will be cut to size. Your problem will be small. So when you focus on God in prayer, and you see his majesty and you say, God, I know that what I'm going through may frighten me, but it doesn't frighten you. It may terrorize me, but it does not terrorize you. And it is always helpful when people come into Lent to just know, I, I, I always encourage and challenge people to have what you call a Lent project. Is there a besetting sin? or a particular temptation, or a particular issue that you want to say, God, I want to bring this before you. And within this time, I want you to deal with this. Maybe it's a problem of, of, of being talkative. It's a problem of being busybody. It's a problem of slandering others, or being a gossip, or just a misuse of your time. And you say, God, I want you to deal with this. And that is your Lent project. And every day of that period, you are bringing it before God. You are saying, God, help me with this. Help me with this. And that vision of God will help you to know that that problem, that mountain can be conquered because God is involved. So as we begin this Ash Wednesday, we'll, a number of us will uh, go to churches where we will worship and that is encouraged especially on a day like this to start learn on a good footing and you find that the prayers are very carefully chosen to help us to draw close to God. Indeed, one of the passages in Lent uh, is James uh, chapter 4 verse 8. It says, come close to God and he will come close to you. It's a time to draw close to God and it's a time to know that in fasting, God listens. Fasting is not our way of trying to change God's mind, but adjusting ourselves to the mind of God. Because what the psalmist does here is to see God more clearly, and he is now able to say, you will arise and have pity on Zion. And our Zion is the church where God has placed us in this country. And indeed, our Jerusalem is our Nigeria. And we must pray and ask God's intervention on behalf of the church and on behalf of the nation so that the Lord will deal with the things that we are not able to deal with. There are all kinds of issues all over the place that we are unable to uh, deal with in our own strength, in our own power. But we can ask God to say, God, help us. God, come to our aid. And what this does is it shows us God on his throne. 
because this is what he says, he says but you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Fasting is a term that makes us know that God has not been dethroned. No problem dethrones God. The problems of Nigeria don't dethrone God. The problems of the world don't dethrone God. The problems of your life do not dethrone God. Have fixed in your mind that God is still enthroned. That is what encourages us to go to him. And so as ashes are put on us and we are reminded that we are dust and to dust we shall return. Isn't it wonderful to know that God is not dust? God is immortal. God is invisible. He's the only wise God. And there's every confidence through Christ to draw near to his throne. And you know, in, from verse 12 onwards, it says, you will arise and have pity on Zion. It is time to favor her. The appointed time has come. It goes again in verse 16. It says, For the Lord builds up Zion. And when you read through this psalm, you see that this is a man of faith who knows that God can do what man cannot do. And I like that closing verse of the psalm. He said, The children of your servant shall dwell secure, their offspring shall be established before you. Every child of God should claim this. If you have a family, claim it concerning your children, that my children will not stray. The word of God says they shall be established. Parents whose children are straying, keep praying and say, God, remember your word. My children shall be established before you. May the Lord bless you. Like the psalmist, let us pray. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And whatever your people are bringing before you in this holy season of Lent, O Lord, may these anxieties and challenges become testimonies. In Jesus' name, Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.